can talk about you guys. I can only talk about me. I can talk about some of the disciples as to what they wrote. They hit a dead end. A dead end. Mary says, Michael, we have on right now concerning suicide more than that. There are 12 in Europe right now doing the same exact thing. I see five chat rooms. And that happens every single week. Every week. I did it myself a couple of times. I did because I did not want the life I was living. You feel I felt stuck. What you guys think about something, right? You're doing things. You have done things. You have no stomach for. Right? You built up a life. You have no desire for. Then you say to yourself, why am I even here? That's when you truly have identified you want out of where you were. Mm -hmm. And you start looking at the Lord's, what he's introducing. So imagine something, everybody. Imagine you hearing Christ talk about forgiveness. A kingdom where everybody is brand new. A place where none of the vices of this life exist. Imagine that. They heard that. Imagine that. A place where things are forgiven. A place where no one, no one is judging anybody by their past, by their mistakes, by their mishaps, addictions, or anything else, but people are freed from all those things. An absolute correction. And to know that there's power to seal those corrections. To sever them, rather, from a person's life. That's a brand new life. While they're still alive, that's purpose. That's being fully embraced and forgiven. That's being fully loved and no longer walking by yourself. Think about that. That's what they heard. And they didn't want their lives anymore. They began to identify with love itself because they didn't have love at that time. Think about that. You had a tax collector. He grew up a specific way, and he was taken from his own people. You know they talk about him like a dog, but being in the world of business, he said, I got to do what I got to do anyway. Do you think he liked that? No, he didn't. The fishermen that would go out from day to day and catch fish and nobody appreciated him. What a dead life that was, being stuck in this day in and day in out job. And that's all you ever could be. What about the prostitute? Back in those days, there was no welfare system. If you did not have a husband and you were on your own, that's a death sentence. If you have no family heritage or anything else, that's a death sentence. Plus, she had an issue of blood and some other things going on. She didn't want that life anymore. She was surviving. Listen to me carefully. These people were surviving. They were just surviving. They were not living. They were just surviving. That's all they were doing, surviving. How many of you find yourself just surviving? You're just surviving. You just exist. 
Hmm? That's what the apostles saw. That's what the disciples saw. That's where we find ourselves. I've told you guys before, I've been there a couple of times. I really am. I saw no point. No point whatsoever. I didn't. That's how heavy things can get. And I'm certainly not one of those that will say, well, just go pray, everything will be all right. No, because it's the process of going to Christ, missing in a lot of people's lives. A lot of people who think they're with Christ have not gone to him because they're still trying to keep everything of their old lives. They are. But when you hit that dead end and you simply exist, here's what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you something factual. That the Lord, he most certainly is that way. The Lord is that way. Now I have to tell you guys something because Mayor has the recording somewhere. I told those who record, I'm going to interrupt this, tell those who record. This very thing I just said, I told those to record this a long time ago. This is that time right now. You got to go back and find that. I told that somebody, somebody out there was contemplating suicide. Listen to me closely on this. It was a moment I saw a long time ago, and I said that very thing, that very thing. And I asked them, I, I told everybody in COT about it, and people did record that. I hope and pray they recorded that. But I told them when that day would come, there was a bit of resistance that did come with it, but some were free, right? But this very moment, right after this moment, some beautiful things took place. Rick says, I remember. You do remember? You had those notes? Thank God somebody was listening. I described this very thing. Uh, who is it? Who, let me go back. Bill, a girl. You're the one. You're the one. That's the one. Billard Girl is the one. That is the one. Uh, let me tell you guys something. When you get close, when you get in life and you really start to see what your life is, you're not going to want it. When you, when your eyes are opened to see what your life is, what the life that you have created is, you're not going to want it. It doesn't matter how good it looks, you're not going to want it. Because you begin to see the absolute truth of it. I mean the absolutes of it. People are reaching this point more than ever now. Those are the same folks who will identify with Christ on a level none of us could ever reach. Because going to Christ, right? Actually going to Christ. These guys went to Christ. And the scripture says... All who have come to me, the Father hath given me. Right? That means they identified their own life, and they saw what it was. And at that point, they say, what's the use in going forward? But then they hear Christ. They hear Christ. They hear Jesus. Right? They start to really hear him. The days were always coming when power and authority would be demonstrated in the earth. That day was always coming. But now we've hit a time of true, I mean of absolute change, of some real change. A time when it's not the phony baloney stuff anymore. No, the Lord is moving in ways nobody ever thought possible. And some of the ancient some of the ancient things, the authorities that were exercised in those times, people will see again. And it's coming through people you would never expect, and those people of whom they will come through. They never thought that they never dreamed of it. The Lord is doing something authentic. Very authentic. Bill, a girl says, I'm confused. Don't be confused. 
you're a little more blessed in a way that you never counted on. You've simply seen a truth. That's all. You've seen a truth that a lot of people still can't see today. And when they, listen, when all those people heard that message of Christ, and she told them, the Lord told them, about our new kingdom, they related to it. They didn't want their life anymore. They wanted what Christ was offering. The ways of their life and the ways of the world they lived in, they didn't want that anymore. They wanted what Christ had, what was in his kingdom. Listen, they desired his truth, not the bunch of rules. They wanted his truth. They saw what life really was. They saw the vices in life. They saw the dead ends in life. They said, surely this can't be it. Come on now, somebody. Haven't you reached that point where you say, surely this can't be it? Some people have been quite successful. And even they say, surely this can't be it. I hit a point where I was both successful in doing things, but I said, really, this is it? This is it. It's all a facade. It's acting a part. It only exists so long as people are around you. Do you know what happens when nobody is around you anymore? All that stuff that is held up that you had fun in, the standard you had is gone. When nobody's around you, all that stuff is gone. Did anybody notice that? When there's nobody else around, it does not matter if you're successful or not. It does not matter if you've achieved all of what you wanted to achieve or not. Nothing matters, does it? You begin to see it's a big facade. As if people exist to impress each other. But then Christ came. Christ came with a message of a kingdom. Christ came with a message of a kingdom where people could truly be brand new. Where all things could be brand new. Not only did he come with the message of the kingdom, but with the power of the kingdom. The real power of the kingdom. And he had standards in that kingdom which were nothing like the world. They were based on love and in truth. No more tricks and deceit, deception. No more pitfalls and setting traps. None of that stuff. No, it was based in something very different. And they agreed with it. Can you imagine hearing something like that? I know I did. Every time I go through the gospel, when I'm reading about forgiveness, when I'm reading about the kingdom of God, people, some people see rules I see absolute freedom. Freedom from the vices in this life, the traps and tricks in this life. You start to see it. My goodness, what's today's day? Now see guys, I have to do something. I was shaking there a little bit. I was. Because it was just as it was back then. I saw it back then. And here it happened today. Today of all days. This is the third. People are saying, this happens to be the first of the month, too. Isn't that something? Which is uh, how many days in our countdown, everybody? I'm telling you, we're getting close to something. I'm so glad you guys kept notes. I'm glad you kept notes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. To go to Christ is when you identify with him. When you identify with the kingdom and you truly see what this world is. See, it's very difficult to go to Christ. If you love this world, you can't do it. Listen to me. And the Bible says to love this world is to have enmity with God. So what happens to all those who get sick of this world? Because they see what it is. They want nothing to do with it anymore. 
And I'm telling you, that will manifest in a way for a lot of people. It is they have thoughts of ending everything because they see what their life is. They see the truth of it and they say, what's the use? That's what they say. I would say uh, for the last, for the last year, it's really been ramping up. It's specifically, more specifically in the last four months, people have been caught seeing their own lives more and more and more and more. And they're coming out with the same outcome. They are. They're starting to see the same thing. Now, of course, some people, you know, sometimes things can be magnified by other means. It doesn't matter. The, the core belief of that person, of people, is starting to surface. They're tired of playing this game in the life of what men have built because they see the traps in it. They see it. They see it. And so now, the, folks, listen, going to Christ, that's the first thing you identify is the truth of this world. Do you know how difficult that is for a person to see? Do you know how many people still, they think that this life is exactly how those who run this world are saying it is? Anybody who sees the truth, only your Father in Heaven can open your eyes to that. And it is quite overwhelming. In fact, it's a shock. It's a highly disappointing thing. Because you'll see it one way. A dead end. That's what you see. That means it's no longer for you. That's what it means. That means something else is in store for you for real. No games. No trickery. None of that stuff. Not for just speech, not for show, but for real. That means you can, you can actually identify with certain things that many people cannot. It also means you're the first batch of many, especially in this time. The first batch. The first set. It's beginning all right. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, because I'm kind of taken back. I really am. I'm kind of taken back. You had to forgive me for that. I'm taken back because it, it, it's, you call it deja. You know how people say uh, they, uh, deja vu is something you have seen before, right? Well, a long time ago, this conversation and the situation, I spoke about a long time ago and described it. It popped up a long time ago. And so I'm looking at both the, the um, both chats where people were talking about this situation. It's Mixler in the, the COT main. I'm looking at that, and this situation pops up just like I saw back then. I don't know how many, how many, how many years ago was that. Does anybody know? Anyway, back then I tried to explain the situation, and I wanted somebody to write this situation down because it just happened. When I saw the name, when the name started scrolling, it took me back. It took me back. Way back. Because you're talking about a day of meaning. Oh, my. Folks, I'll tell you this. Listen. This time you're in right now is a real time. Everything you suspect about the strength of Christ is more real than any of us ever thought. Things that will come about. The eyes being opened. Most things you can imagine. They're beginning. They're not going to begin. They're beginning. There are going to be people 
who suddenly, I mean suddenly, become so different. You might find them strangers, but the truth is, the Father is going to work on the first batch a quick work, opening their eyes to see the truth. And I'm not just talking about life's truth, the truth. This first match, having seen that truth, that'll start to spread. It's going to cause a power shift. I mean a big power shift. And it won't start one place. It's going to start all over the place. Those who don't have it in them to be authentic about the Lord's works who have turned it into something else, my heart goes out to them. Because they, too, are going to be given a chance. But when the Lord gives a chance, he does so in a corrective way. But for those who are part of the first match, their lives are about to open up in a way they never thought possible. And that does mean many folks will be elevated almost like a fast-track crucible. Because the events that we've been reading about, well, now they have to take place. Or they are going to take place. And the Lord's going to do exactly what he said he would do. And for you guys who believe in him already, it's going to be in a very open way. But hear me on this. Don't expect. You know, the folks you think that are going to be used for a lot, right? Don't expect all of them to be used. And there are folks you would never suspect would be used. They are going to be used. Try not to handpick who you think is going to be who. Try not to do that. Try not to do that. The Lord's truth will start to be seen by all of us, collectively. And true changes will begin. I mean, in a way that is faster than any other way. Many things are going to be opened up now. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, I can't believe I'm saying the very statement I can't stand to hear. I can't believe today is that day. For the people who have seen their own lives and they reached a dead end. And they are absent love right now. You will run over with love. You will. The Lord will often have a person recognize the truth of their lives before he touches them. Before he fully anoints them. Because they had to be a true vessel. I mean true through and through. So they have to go through a true process. It is a difficult process. Because it brings a person, person up to a point where they have seen the truth of their own life. They're no longer tricked by life itself. Once they see that truth, their eyes will open to the kingdom. Once they see the kingdom, no one will be able to break their faith in that kingdom. Because the Lord himself will build upon that with them. The Lord has his appointed times when people come forward. Have an understanding of that. Encourage in truth always. But 
have an understanding that these processes we have read about for so long, they're coming to pass. Events that have been held back for a long time, they're coming to pass. The victories that you know one day you're going to have, they're closer than ever before. And the unbelievable things that those of the past could only see by faith and by prayer and by supplication. You may very well find yourselves living in. You may. And again, for all of you who have just identified your own life, You've seen your life and you don't want it. And you truly want Christ. Now is that time to open your ears all the way to him. Hear him. Hear him. Hmm? Hear what the Lord is saying. Follow him. Because that path is alive, not dead. That's a living path with a living word. With real change. Going above all things. Get ready to be never left alone. Not ever. When you go to Christ, he will not cast you out. When you go to him. But folks, the real things are about to just bulge out, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Now there's something I'm going to tell you. All right? Because there are always two types. The true of the most high. But yes, I have to give you the beware. Because there is something else that's coming forward too. Something else is most certainly coming forward. With the contention that it, that it brings, with a, almost a bad taste in your mouth, that will follow. It's coming forward too. Listen, many things are coming forward and it's not a joke. And all of you guys that wrote those notes, God bless you for that. I'm still taken back by that. Because all of this is happening seemingly in one big season. But my goodness, what comes next? You already know what comes next, but, you're, but most people are not prepared for uh, the reality of it. Let's put it that way. But don't worry, I have no choice but to discuss those things. No choice. I'll be back in a few minutes this Friday. We control our own time. Right? So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Oh, and you guys, put your questions up there. Put them up there. And I hope that you guys have the beginnings of how to go to Christ. It is when you recognize your own life. Listen, when you recognize your own life and what it truly is, good things will not come out. That's not a good time. Just letting you know that. It's not a good time. It almost feels like your entire life is halfway wasted. It does. And that's expected. But there's great promise in that. Somebody said, is it safe for Christians to use sensitive devices that synchronizes ODB frequency with those sound bones and you know, perceive Christmas? Listen, I want you to know something about technology. Technology is always nullified. Right? When, when trickery is involved, nothing can have a full effect upon you because of who you belong to. So don't have a fear of these things. Never, don't ever say, well, I'm going to use this anyway because the Lord will protect me. Don't do that. 
That is tempting the Lord your God, actually. That's trying to make him intercede in your life, to make him, right, um, uh, do something in your life. Don't do that. What I'm telling you is this. If you were to take up something and the world meant it to kill you, that's never up to the world, is what I'm telling you. That's up to your father, not the world. If you were to ingest something that were to kill you, that's not up to the world. See, because most of the time, you don't know what these devices, these things are truly doing. Right? I'm telling you from the little bit that I know, many of you should have been gone by now, but you're not. You're just not. Because there are things they just simply cannot breach the declaration of the creator of all things. Sorry, it's not going to work. And when it comes to those who are marked by the Lord, you're not going anywhere until the Lord says you're going somewhere. You're not. No. Electronics, all that kind of stuff. Do, do you know there's an active, there are active campaigns all the time where they collect data, right? Things happen. People go to the hospital. They report conditions. People refine the work that way. You guys remember the old test in New York City where they dropped uh, all those mosquitoes? Huh? You guys remember Florida, same thing happened. And then people went to the hospital and reported specific symptoms. That's what they were looking for. When they report the symptoms... Should they come in with certain symptoms, right, that information is passed on and then eventually it reaches the universities who have the test going in the first place. The citizens had no idea they were being guinea pigs. Do you really believe that has stopped? It's not stopped. But for all those, I, if, you, if you take notice of something, even in those experiments, the church was around then. How come it didn't affect those who were involved in the church? Hmm? When a specific disease was spread in four cities, why didn't it affect those who were involved, truly involved in the church at that time? That mystified everybody. Nothing can overtake you. The only one that can overtake you is your father in heaven. And he's not going to overtake you. He will call you home. And if he does not call you home, nothing on earth is going to take you out. You exist by his decree. Those in the world exist, right, by mercy. By grace, and what happens to a rebellious person who turns against Christ? What happens? Mercy can often be lifted. God has already said what he would do and that they would go through many things on earth in an attempt to get them to see, to change. You remember the, the, the scripture in the Bible when God was talking to Israel? He said, why should I stricken you more and more, you'll just rebel more and more. In other words, why should I let worse things come upon you? You'll just rebel more and more. So when God is correcting something he loves, they're going to go through torments to get them to wake up. The Lord clearly said that certain people, they'll just be taken by whatever was against them. Because there's a line they can cross. When they start taking you out, and they never cease from turning from that, right? And that truly is the root cause of them. Often they are removed. But nothing can happen to you unless the Lord deems it so. That's why the Lord said, don't fear man who can, who can just kill the body. Fear God who can kill both the body and the soul. 
all of us have been exposed to things that should have killed us, but it didn't. It did not. Most of us should have had food poisoning, but we didn't. A lot of us should have had diabetes, the worst type, but it didn't manifest. I'm telling you that you're being kept, period. You're being kept. Somebody said the Lord showed me about leprosy for some reason because it's back. That's part of the reason why, because it's back. There are many diseases back. Many. But the Lord is keeping you guys. He's keeping you. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Uh oh, there we are. Okay, now we're back. All right, you guys. Questions? Your concerns? No, that wasn't stupid. Not at all. I'm going to let you know something real quick. To the Mixler chat. Here's the conundrum. You ready? Here's the issue. Here it is. There was a time. See, nobody ever asked me, Mike, did you really contemplate suicide? One time, yeah. I did. Twice. Do you guys know what the problem was? Why did not I go through with it? Nobody asked. You want to know why? Anybody? Anybody want to know why? I didn't want to murder. That's why. Listen. Sometimes you think you're here all by yourself, right? Truly alone. The truth is you're not. When I was very young, very young, I went through distressing times, and I found something out. The very moment but I thought I had mustered up enough courage, right, to have that idea go to another level. Somebody needed me when I was very young. In fact, it was a person who was in a wheelchair. He had asthma. I told you about this little kid. He wanted to play flag football. You guys remember that? I told you that story. And nobody, he would just sit there at the front door and everybody else would play football in the front yard of this simply. It was a big yard, big yard. And this old kid could never play because he had asthma. So one day, I got him suited up and everything. And I pulled him into the game. I was pushing him in a wheelchair so he could play flag football. Right? I had recognized that somebody needed me. That made, that was the happiest day of his life. It was. And then he died. He died. And when I found that out, it was, it was not a good thing to know that he died. But later on, I found out that because I wheeled him around in that wheelchair, he, that was the greatest day of his life. That was. That's the shortened version of that story. It was another time something similar happened. With a, I was a little older. Just a little older. Something similar happened. The truth is, God never put you here by yourselves. There are people in this world you're made for. 
You're made for somebody, some folks in this world. And without you, they're dead. They're goners. God has put you here and linked you to somebody's life that can receive only from you. Only from you. And there will be a certain time that will come up in your life when that person truly needs you. God knew that person was coming because he sent their parents. And he also sent their help, which was you. Isn't that something? You have no idea that you've been sent here for someone else who's been sent here. You have despite what you think of yourselves, despite what you think you have done or have not done, you've been sent here and you're a lifeline to somebody else. And they can't receive of anybody else because there's only one you. Nobody else on earth is like you. You're the only one of your kind. They need you. And if you're not here, they're not going to make it. Why would the Lord do something like that? Because he's the one that made you. He knows everything about you. And he did not make a mistake. Nor did he make an error. Nor are you flawed in any way. You're going through a process. And fulfillment is on the other side. A fulfillment that none of us can conceive of. People think they can, but they cannot. You're the ones that made it. You're the children of promise. So never say you're here for nothing. Because to someone else you are everything. And it's important that every day of your life you contemplate everything you go through. That you understand everything you go through because it's for a reason. It is highly purposed beyond your comprehension. Remember that. Somebody says, question, Michael, when the Antichrist, the Antichrist coming from a small people, what are they referring to? I think just that, a small people in that context, I've looked at that a few times. A small people would be an insignificant people. That's what a small people is. He comes from an insignificant people, which disqualifies him from being, well, from quite a few things. He comes up and becomes strong with a small people. They do not give him the honor of the kingdom. He overcomes them by flatteries, by telling them exactly what they want to hear. And isn't it funny? That's just like charlatans do. They tell everybody what they want to hear. Isn't that funny? We have a situation right now where we have a new government forming in the world from a small people. No, I know people have popular theories. I tend to stay with the scriptures. I know that God will have things revealed. But that is a very catchy scripture, which, well, frankly, the more popular folks, right, they, they didn't really come up from a small people. 
But if you look at a situation like Palestine, that is a small people, isn't it? There are possibilities out there. I never come up with absolute conclusions, and there are things that, uh, that I've seen and know behind everybody else's theories. But God will have that revealed to all of us. He will. But it's very hard to ignore. And in Palestine, they go to Russia. And they start the process of forming a government from a small people. And that this small people has indignation against Israel which could bolster the indignation of other countries to act. I find that utterly astounding. Now, it does not make it true. It does not identify the absolute individual. Just remember, just as it's written in Thessalonians, it'll be like that. This man of perdition is going to be revealed. God will have him reveal to all of us. All of us are going to know exactly who these characters are. People can speculate all day. But upon his coming forward, all of us will know him. All of us will. We'll make no mistake. Right? All of us will. But there is a process underway that is uh, quite astounding. It is quite astounding. Somebody says, can you explain more about the mixed children in the 90s? The 30s spoke on past ball last night, children's generation. Yes, you know what? I can expand upon that in a midnight hour. I'll do that in a midnight hour so I can go into details. It's, 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 here, here's the issue with coming up with the, talking about that in midday. We have a different audience in the midday, right? And some people, they probably are not <laughs> ready to hear uh, some of the, some of the, greater details about that, nor would they believe them. Not yet. It's very difficult to believe certain things without demonstration, right? Without other people coming forward with that demonstration to show people, yes, this is rooted in truth. And because it'd be, it's, it's just too hard to capture that way, right? Very hard to capture. But there has been a process in a way for some time now. Uh, many things, I'll say this, many things that people think are coming have been going on for a long time now, right? They've been going on for a long time. And so it makes certain, like uh, like some people say, well, the government wants to kill you, right? That's what they say. And I mentioned this last night. A lot of people are afraid the government wants to kill them. There have been programs underway for a long time that have been highly successful. They're not fa as fancy as people have theorized but they work far greater than what anybody would ever want to recognize, right? Things are going just how they desire them to go. People are doing just what they want them to do. They really are. And social media has been a big part of the, of the closing of this whole thing, right? For example, a lot of people talk about a world government. Well, look around. Now, let's talk about currency. A lot of people talk about a one-world currency. How many have heard that term, a one-world currency, right? And then they go to Revelation, and they say, well, the black horse is going to be a one-world currency. Now, I told you, I shared that with you guys before. I never, never saw that before. Never. What I did see was the established, the established money system that we have today. Everybody has to have money for goods and services, not goats, right? Not chickens and things like that. No, their, their balance is used, right? Everything is traded under a balancing system. Everything is. So there we are with that. There we are with that. Someone says, Mike, can you talk about the significance of uh, capital of Astani and Kazakhstan? Well, they have, uh, as more of a, uh, well, it's historical, yes, but it's also as highly esoteric. There's weird things happening in that place. Weird things, right? Weird things.
of things. That's been that hour in discussion too. Well, to, to really tell the truth of it, because if we told it in you know daytime, we'd have to stop at a certain point. Somebody says, "Why is Iran gaining power? Is it is it biblical?" Iran is Persia. Persia is the power center and the seat of something that never goes away. All throughout the Word of God, Persia has a consistency in the entire thing. Right? Remember in the Bible I talked about the prince of Persia. Well, kind of find out that actual word is chief prince of Persia. And a chief prince is a principality. No wonder Gabriel was held back because he was in a spiritual battle. And these principalities have dominion over certain regions of this earth. And God allows them to have dominion because they're part of the dragon the real dragon. Which is why they don't want people reading, you know, certain lost books. Like, they're only Jasher, more specifically Enoch, are two of the books that answer so much. They do. And if you look carefully at those books, they talk about government, and nobody wants those books included. See, back, back then, back in the day, government was or did control faith. They removed everything concerning faith in government. So they separated government from faith, but secretly, haven't you noticed, that government dictates faith. It also competes against faith. Can't you see it? That government has become a faith. It is a religion. Can't you see it? Government is a religion. It's been there the entire time. It's just not, people haven't caught on because they tried to take away the connection. And you can't even take away the connection. We should have learned that from Babylon, from reading about King Nebuchadnezzar. Government is a religion. It is a faith. And people are faithful to that religion or faith over everything else. And now government has risen to a point where it has actually put down all the powers of everything else and it governs the world right now. And people worship it. Can't you see it? People worship government. Pure and simple. Things are happening incredibly fast, right? Incredibly fast. Let me see, what is that watcher? Let me see what watcher has. Watcher says, uh, when countries around the world agree on a separate new payment system, the ability of the U.S. to strangle the economies of foreign countries will virtually disappear overnight, all the power of the dollar will evaporate. So I says, right, what is the significance of today's time stamp marker? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's the beginning of a process. Oops, no, don't, don't do that. I clicked somebody wrong in Mixler. I almost blocked you. It's, a, it's, a, it's the beginning of a process that, my goodness, stands out incredibly. The same thing was seen a while ago. A while ago. Now, I wanted people to remember that, if they could. Because it was the beginning of a process. Now, you guys know the other day, right? I just think of this. The other day, I shared with everybody a caution. A caution. A caution that is disturbing me even right now. Even a message was given concerning that caution. I mean, a natural message going to specific places it was given. And so... But then today happens to complement that same thing. Today, when I ask people to remember that, because of the beyond, I cannot, I can't, I don't have an ability to remember many things that, that pop up. I will not remember them. I can act on them, that they're in my heads, right? But I can't just readily, I, I can't remember them for some reason. And sometimes nobody else can either. 
but it's the beginning of the start of some things, right? So things to just expect. What I talk to you guys about, just expect what you did not expect. For example, if, if, if I can recall rightly, a thousand died in a fire. I'm speaking future tense. They were trapped. They couldn't get out. It was a sad, sad story. But it hadn't happened yet. That came too back then. Way back then. The same thing happened back then. A change with God's people also came. Get ready for filtering. A big filtering. You know that time of the Bible where it says anything spoken in darkness is going to be shouted from the rooftops? Get ready for that. Get ready for that one. Get ready for that. And it's going to be shocking to some of you to hear what you're going to hear. How long, somebody tell me, how, how many years ago was that? that uh, this situation, the same situation popped up. The same conversation, the same situation popped up back then, and I talked about it. It's popping up. Same thing. So let's say it's beginning. It is beginning. Right now, evidently. Right now. This was years ago. Somebody said, Michael, could the abomination of desolation be standing in the temple? Us, biometrically. I think that is more, well, that's a two-fold degree. Two-fold degree. Don't you guys know something? That's a big deal, right? That is the shift everybody is, uh, uh, everybody can pinpoint. Now, we know one thing, those in Judea are going to see it. That's what the Lord said. The Lord said those in Judea would see it. When you see the abomination of desolation standing where not, not was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let the reader so understand, though, then let those in Judea, then, not before, but when they see the abomination of desolation standing where not, not, let those in Judea flee into the mountains, right? Now, what the abomination of desolation is, is described in the book of Daniel. Very well, actually. It's also described in two other books. We will get to that because that is a milestone. That's a milestone, but take note now, take note. In the book of Daniel, when the armies invade Jerusalem, they will set up the abomination that makes it desolate. They're going to set it up. That's what it says in the book of Daniel. It is so clear in the book of Daniel, right? They're going to they're gonna set up the abomination that makes it desolate. It stands where it ought not stand, right? It's an item of desecration. Now, there's another scripture that says, especially in Thessalonians, when it says this person, is going to stand in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God, right? In summary, as a paraphrasing that scripture, he's going to stand in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God, right? But listen, in the Bible there are five words that are used for that, so it gives, a, gives me a clear picture of what that actually is. But I keep telling people that there are two folds to this. Because someone can stand within your hearts too, can't they? And they should, nobody should be in the heart of a believer, in the soul of a believer but Christ. In fact, Christ should be the only one in you. Right? And in the Bible it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Correct? 
So what happens when somebody else takes the position of Christ within mankind? Then he'll be standing where he ought not stand. He'll proclaim himself as God in the temple of God. Believers are at the temple of God. And in Revelation, what do you see? You see a bunch of people that blaspheme God. In Thessalonians, what do you see? A falling away. People that fell away from the faith. In Revelation, what does this person do? He calls fire down from heaven inside of all men, right? He's working miracles, isn't he? So he's having people believe in a type of divinity of himself while he's proclaiming himself to be the one. Now, if people believe that, he's going to be standing in the hearts. To take the mark of the beast is one thing, but to take the mark of a man, that's worship. To have the number of a man on you is worship. That's worship. So this guy is going to just, he's going to sweep people off their feet. He'll murder and do all sorts of things, and people are still going to love him. Now, this guy carries the spirit, too. And that same spirit has gone to the kings of the earth. So let's hear me. The same thing the Antichrist does on a smaller scale, so will the leaders of this earth do. I'm going to say that one more time. Because we read in Revelation about the three unclean spirits, one comes out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. They go into the kings of the earth, working miracles. That means they all share the same spirit. So the exact same thing the Antichrist does, sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. The same thing he does where he wants praise all by himself. That's the exact same thing these kings of this earth are doing right now. And they will continue to do. Because these three unclean spirits have gone unto the kings of this earth and of the whole world to gather them to that great day, to that battle. God Almighty. And haven't you noticed that all the kings of this earth, what do they do every single time? They brag on themselves. See that? When, when somebody is godly, they're not going to brag on themselves. When somebody is godly, they're not going to degrade anybody else. I'm not going to do that. All of them are doing it. Putin called Biden some things. Nobody should ever call Biden. Biden has called Putin some things. Nobody should ever call Putin. All of them are doing the same thing. All of them are doing the same thing. And they have a pride to them that is unmatched because they stand up there and they say, oh, look what I did. I did this. I did this. It's because of me this happened. I don't like any of it. Any of it. I can clearly see the spirit in operation. Those th three unclean spirits are all over the place. And you can see them by the traits they carry. All these kings are doing the exact same thing. They're pointing to the other guy saying, he's stupid and I'm right. That's what they're doing. They're not cooperating. No. They're causing each other problems and now it's for real. That's what makes it so dangerous. These guys are changing. They're becoming more vile in what they're doing. People can excuse all they desire. But you guys who know who Christ is, look at the trace of the Antichrist. You're going to find them in all the kings of this earth. That's why there's still a plea within me to all people to cease your worship of mankind. As the Lord will say, cease ye from man whose breath is in the loins. But I'm telling you that people are going to worship people 
more than ever before and kill for people and become martyrs for people, not for righteousness, but for people. It's happening. And the very thing people are not taking serious, they should take very serious, but they continue to downplay it. They've been given ample warning. And we talked about that too. You guys know, you guys who have been here in COT, you know the only item missing is the African forces. You know that. When the African forces are involved, and I'm telling you, no one will escape. Anybody who sides with darkness, they shall not escape. There is no escape. And their torment is going to begin while they're alive. And it's going to be a serious matter. And this is not the time to downplay it. And it, that's a sad thing. It's not sad when a saint goes to be with the Lord when they pass. It is sad. When a human being who was never intended to be condemned fully adopts condemnation. That's sad. That will also build and overwhelm and overrun. There are threats being, you guys remember here, and I'm not gloating on myself either, I'm just a vessel. But you know, at the beginning of COT, I told you when they start talking about nuclear weapons every day. You remember how many people came out and said they'll never do that again. We're far beyond that time. Don't you guys remember that? I didn't just dream that up. The Lord put that on my heart. I mean heavy. And I said, when they start talking about nuclear weapons and treaties are broken, People are going to take it for a joke, and it's going to be absolutely real. And they will be used. Do you guys remember that? That was at the beginning of COT. You know what people said? You know what the experts said? Oh, no, that'll never happen. We're far beyond that now. That's Cold War stuff. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's ever going to do that again. Nevertheless, I kept saying it. And now what are they talking about? What is everybody afraid of? And like I said at the beginning, but this time, they will be used. They will be used. And that won't be a joke. And that's not going to be some political point. The torment God speaks of. It will grip this earth. And before anybody says, well, you know, we... These, uh, the, the, the whole the seal set to break before that. No, they don't. What about Hiroshima? What about those people who experienced that hydrogen bomb? That I mean, that bomb back then, it, uh, nothing came then, did it? Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And people have been murdering people and using things like that for a long time. Sometimes in sight, sometimes out of sight. But now they're going to do it again. And America has been blessed. And we already discussed that. If America turns away from the living God, if they choose that other path, the fullness of mercy won't be there. The defenses are down because of what people are choosing. So anyway, here we are. 
Here we are. Somebody said, Miss Mike, have you seen an evil demonic face beside the moon? Actually, no, I don't really. No, no. I've worked with some faces like that a lot. But no, I never saw it beside the moon. That is not to take away or degrade from what anybody else sees either, right? It is not. I don't, I'm not one of those who will say, oh, you didn't see this or you didn't see that. I'm not one of those. Not one of those people. Normally people say that trying to be right about their neatly organized world. My world is, was collapsed a long time ago. It did. It collapsed. All the innocence was lost. So I'm kind of spoiled in that way. My whole world turned upside down many years ago. And that's where it is. Even It's just not the way it is for everybody else. It is. Okay, folks, I want to I wanna mention something real quick here. Because I want you guys to remember this. I'm going to close with this. This is from Revelation. Listen, I'm going to read something. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, a great chain in his hand. And laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, set a seal upon him. that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Never forget about the thousand-year reign. Never forget that as soon as Satan is bound a thousand years, no one is negative. Hmm? No one is negative. Folks, listen to me. Listen to me. The darkness... The negativity, the evil, stops in the earth when Satan is bound a thousand years. And there's peace on earth for a thousand years. You guys hear me? It is peace on earth for a thousand years when Satan is bound. With all your negative thoughts that you have, you would not have them if Satan were bound a thousand years. Isn't that something? Any desire to do wrong, all that stuff is gone when Satan is bound a thousand years. And then as soon as he's loosed, it all comes back. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? What does that tell each and every one of you? Any negativity that you have, Satan is the source of it. He is the source of it. He is the energy, the power of it. He is. And when he's bound a thousand years, nobody contends with it. He is rebellion. He is deceit. You know, in the Bible, when it says we don't war against flesh and blood, but a principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and all, you know, all these things, that's them. That is the dragon. When they're bound up, when Satan is bound up, the king's source of that power. And in Revelation, Satan is equated to be the dragon, and the dragon is that entire system. When it's bound a thousand years, all of a sudden, nobody ever struggles with negative thoughts, darkness. Right? They don't struggle with that stuff. No one is depressed. No one is in, sorrowful. None of those things. So what does that tell you right now? If Satan were destroyed right now, not one of you would ever struggle with a negative thought again. Right now, there'd be no decay in the earth. Healing would instantly begin. 
He is the one you're fighting. He is the one God gave you authority over. Most of you confront people. People are just vessels. Now, you've been filled by your Father through Christ. The world is filled with something else. God gave you power over all the enemy. He never gave you power over the people, over the enemy. There's no need to have power over people. If they're freed from darkness, they are truly different. You're starting to see what the war is about. Now, the world does not know this, so they fight each other. Which means they're always going to fight. Why? Because that dark influence will always be among them. When you fight, stop looking at the person. And look at the spirit behind the negativity, the darkness, deceits of that person. It is, in fact, the dragon. And God gave you power over that. Do you know that? He gave you all power over that. He never gave any of us power over people. He gave us power over that spirit that drives people to do awful things. I want you guys to see that. Think about that. When Satan is bound a thousand years, it's a thousand years of peace. No conflict. None of that. Until Satan is loosed again. But also think of this. Why in the world would God bind Satan up for a thousand years and set him free again? I'll give you a spoiler. Gog Magog. That's a spoiler. Gog Magog. The word is so rich, right? It is. That's why I choose not to. Th- I don't want to theorize about anything. I don't. I don't like theories. I just like the Lord's word. You can see it. Sometimes you can't articulate it. But it's incredible. And it's effective if we would apply it. If we would apply it. And God put it in you to apply it. You have that strength to apply his scriptures to your life. You do. Folks, God bless each of you. Be ready always. Listen, and as we continue to go forward here in CRT, getting prepared. Remember, I'm telling you guys, listen, I've been, I'm telling you guys, I'm going to be calling on quite a few people for those who would uh, choose to do it, to, as a council, get some things prepared for lots of other folks. It'll be quite needful, quite needful. Also, I can't hold back too much for too long. I'm going to have to spill the beans. But you'll see arcs when that takes place. You may not understand what you're saying. You may not. The only bothersome part to that is this. When people see certain things, it's going to put existence in question. And because they've been primed to believe in aliens, That's exactly where a lot of people are going to go. Straight to aliens. I hope that none of you fall for that. I do hope that none of you fall for that. Keep your prayers up for those who are involved in these fires. I don't know why the fires are on my heart so much this year, but they are. It's almost a perceived devastating time of fires. Hmm. Well, keep your prayers up for those folks. And please get yourselves ready, guys. Please get yourselves ready. 
and help each other stay ready. Because we're really about to go through it. We really are. God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time here at COT. If the player starts up near midnight, you know what that is. Midnight hour. And it just may come. So we'll see. At some point this weekend, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow night, if the player turns on at midnight, you know exactly what it is. Okay? Now, oh, Channel Zero. Channel Zero. When I have my special audios or something like that, something I need to get out this timely, I'm going to come on there. It It is always on, right? All I have to do is press one button and I can broadcast right away. I'm going to be using that more and more. More and more. It has no music, and when I take breaks, it just goes totally blank. There's no music there. But if it turns on and starts broadcasting, that means I have something I want to, you know, share with you guys. So, um... Remember that about Channel Zero, okay? We'll keep a backup audio of most things, most things.